Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. It's been a while since I've used this system, so perhaps the review is in order. This is the Orion carrier plane, that's the big one, and the Mini Star, that's the small one. The carrier plane is the first stage, the Mini Star is the second stage. The Mini Star is based on Venture Star, but it's smaller. Uh, it does have aerospikes in the back, three of them, but they are smaller aerospikes. They generate about a thousand kilonewtons apiece. And the whole thing is reusable except for the payload fairings and the mount. The way this works is the Orion carrier plane, which uses methane and oxygen, and has Rex engines, which are sort of in the middle between Raptor engines and the BE-4s in terms of efficiency. However, they have more thrust than either of those, uh, so they're physically larger as well. Uh, but the methane and oxygen Orion carrier plane lands downrange. It skip, gli skip glides after shutting off and launching from Tampico it lands in the Bahamas or launching from Boca Chica it also lands in the Bahamas. Uh, that means that it has a very set trajectory if we needed to put a payload into a novel trajectory the Mini Star would have to do quite a dog leg and it's not generally a good idea uh, but mostly this is for assembling things in orbit that are going to other planets so this is all about orbital assembly of things so what are we going to do today? Well, the one of the issues with reusable systems in Kerbal Space Program is we can't run both pieces at the same time. Uh, of course, people have used FMRS or something like that to switch between them after uh, you know getting the payload to orbit, switching back to the thing that's supposed to land and try to land it. But I would rather not go with that system. I would like to uh, just get the payload to orbit and then just from that view switch back and that is by virtue of having enough time. In order to have enough time, we have to have this sort of skip glide system that we have with the Orion carrier plane, uh, because that's the only way you have enough hang time to uh, allow the payload to get to orbit and then get back to it, because with like a Falcon 9 system, generally the first stage lands when the second stage is making orbit. So we need to have the hang time, which the Orion carrier plane can have, but also we need the mini star to get to orbit quickly and so normally it has three uh, two engines in the back we have three now to give it enough thrust to weight ratio uh, i've lightened its fuel load a little bit and we're only carrying 40 tons so i've probably done something like this before but i don't recall what the payload capacity was so we're testing it again and it might have been in an older version or a different version of 1.12 or uh, realism overhaul might have changed or stuff, you know, stuff like that. But I need to know the payload capacity of this situation and it's worth testing it again. Uh, it is an interesting test to do. So, without further ado, let's bring it outside and see how it goes. The launch portion of this will be controlled by KOS. I've had to make a few changes because we don't want it to throttle down with the Mini Star. We wanted to keep the high thrust weight ratio so we have enough time. Far we don't need right now, but that might be helpful once I start bringing the carrier plane down. A little bit of rocking of the pad there. And up we go. So methane and oxygen right now, and then once the main star does its thing, that's hydrogen and oxygen. The Orion carrier plane has about 10 times the volume of the Mini Star and 10 times the mass. So that's why we don't really need to light the Mini Star right now. The Orion carrier plane has enough control authority. It gets all balanced right now, as you can see. It doesn't have any problems because the Mini Star is relatively light. And we're pushing the carrier plane to the limit as far as how far we can go with it without it breaking up in the atmosphere when it tries to come back down. And the limit is a surface, uh, not a surface speed, an orbital speed of 4,000 meters per second, surface speed of about 3,600. And I tested that and I can't do any more than that. So it, that's already pushing the g-forces quite high. And so the Orion carrier plane would not be crewed. It would be, uh, you know, a automated system. It looks like it has crew because it was based on the Orion space plane from 2001 A Space Odyssey, 
And in that system, I think both parts were crude. But in that case, also the Orion space plane was not doing so little. The carrier plane was probably coming back a lot slower. So, Tempico. I have to spruce up my Bahamas scenery though, I haven't done that yet. This system was only really meant for cargo, overall. The Mini Star also is not crude, of course. And again, capacity is 40 tons. On the pad, it's like 1,300 tons. That's not a bad ratio, but rockets can get better ratios. We, we do lose some by making it reusable. But we don't actually save much fuel in order to in order to have the returns. And that's because all of it sort of glides back. So there the Orion carrier plane switches off four of its engines, and that's to maintain the balance. You can see the pitch is now being taxed as the Orion carrier plane gets lighter. And so the stuff on top is proportionally heavier. But you can see time to lap lapses is like two minutes here. So there goes the Orion carrier plane, but we move on. We just release fairings at the same time, it's more convenient, we're definitely at a good enough height. After all, right now the thrust weight ratio is quite high, so releasing fairings when the thrust weight ratio is high is not great. So right on separation is probably the best time. Now if it doesn't pitch down then there's no way we would have enough time to get back to the Orion carrier plane before it hit the atmosphere, so this pitching down is indicative of the fact that we are trying this particular method of recovering the Orion carrier plane out. If we had two engines, it wouldn't pitch down like this. The tiles on this are meant to be the Venture Star tiles, which are actually metallic tiles. They were... Well, they were expensive. Inconal and... or Inconal, however it's pronounced. And... That is, that is why Starship is not using this particular system. However, it was considered a more reusable system than the shuttle tiles. And they were fairly lightweight, but they were just really expensive. But if you're gonna reuse the thing, I guess it's not too bad. Far just keeps popping up. <laughs> I can't get rid of it. Okay. Well, it did thrall down. I didn't actually want it to thrall down, but we're in mode 4. Maybe I didn't get rid of it in mode 4. Well, let's still thrall down. Well, there's nothing that's telling it to throttle up again. That's probably the problem. I guess it's for the best, though. It depends. How is the carry plane doing? Well, the carrier plane probably passed apoapsis, but it's not hit the atmosphere yet. It's pretty close, though. 174 kilometers and descending. So again, this is a 40-ton tank of abgas. And maybe we could carry even a little bit more up, but this is to a fairly low orbit right now. The Mini Star might have to use OMS engines to boost it to a higher orbit. Okay, it did make orbit, about 300 meters per second left. And switch! 155 kilometers, so we're just barely making it. The efficiency on the Mini Star's engines is 455 seconds of ISP. Ooh, we don't really want to be pointed down though. 
Sure, does, uh, nope, don't point down more. Uh, come on. The RCS on this is not super powerful. After all, it doesn't have much to do. Ah, uh, we're hitting the atmosphere nose down. <laughs> well, I mean, it's very thin atmosphere, I guess. So, now we have to get to the Bahamas. Which is here. That's the runway we're aiming for. Now this skip glides, so we want we are expecting it to bounce up in a very intense fashion. To some extent I've tested this before, but it's been in different installs and different versions with different mods, and you know how that is. I'm pretty sure Realism Overhaul has been updated since the last time I tried it. The angle we're maintaining over prograde, or the velocity vector, is 30 degrees, and that's about the limit. Here we go. Here's the intense part. And it really can't maintain a pitch too much more than that. Lots of overheating. That's another... Oh, uh, don't worry about those. That's the separatrons. Um, I don't know why they have the heat limit they do. Ah, uh, I really could have used those though. The air brakes. What's the heat tolerance on those? 448 Kelvin. I ask you. I think the air brakes should be able to take more than 448 Kelvin. The separatrons had 773. The fairings had 773. I don't see why the air brakes can't have 773. Uh, I'm, I'm sure in previous versions they had more heat tolerance because they did not blow up before. So, yeah. Okay, we are going up, so that's an important piece of information. We're a little bit north of the runway there. And can we really glide enough? Well, let me just, uh, well, when the fuel ever gets settled down again, I'll try to use up what spare we have left. It shuts the engines down at 4,000 meters per second orbital speed, so... We have a little bit left to use here. That isn't residual. We might as well, since we want to be as light as possible when we land. I can see the main island of the Bahamas right there. Now for this video I'm not testing the mini star re-entry, that's something separate. That has been tested before, but since I haven't used the system in a while, I feel obligated to maybe retest that too. And I honestly don't remember if I got it back to the runway at Tampico. I don't think so. I'm not sure. I feel like something has gone wrong here with Florida, but anyway. Well, the engines are still not settled. The island is in sight. We are at Mach 3. I'll just stop it from trying to pitch up too much. Actually, atmospheric autopilot time. I'm gonna try and use the RCS. There, there isn't much that allows for settling the fuel down on this. Come on! <laughs> Let me use that fuel up. The island is beginning to look a little bit far from this altitude. We are subsonic. Okay, they're settled. I'll give them a go. Putting jets on this thing was always an option. Jets that use methane. Alright, well we have to stretch this glide as much as possible. Fortunately it is very light because it's empty. It's just a big empty fuel tank on wings at this point. See the thing is we add another engine to the Mini Star and I tried to counterbalance that by reducing the fuel in the Mini Star which still worked for 40 tons but 
I'm feeling that we're falling a little bit short here. So some more rebalancing may be necessary. However, in theory, this can work. It's just that I have to find the sweet spot. You know, if... Could we make it a seaplane? Like, just have it go to, into water? But I mean, it has these tiles on it. And these are not the Venture Star type tiles. But yeah... We, we're we're ending up in the water. It's probably better to try and it's probably better to try and get to land. Even though we could dump the landing gear if we don't. I don't know what kind of extra mass we need to survive a water splashdown. I mean, seaplanes do it. It's not a thing that can't be done. Uh, I uh, seaplanes generally have a lot of extra mass. Anyway, this sort of serves as a reintroduction of the concept since I haven't used it in a while. And it's just got to be a matter of tweaking how much propellant we have in each thing. I mean, right now, the main star is still ending up with, with quite a bit extra... 300 meters per second. That, maybe it needs that. Well, I mean, it, it, in Kerbal buoyancy, it can splash down just fine, as you can see. <laughs> I, I'm not too sure that we're going to be buying that. It's also not very light by the time it comes down. 133 tons. It's not a small sucker. No. No cheats making it light, that's for sure. We were just here. So it's just a matter of how I can close that gap. Jets, uh, jets add mass, but then maybe that'll just take out of the extra fuel that I used. Remember, I burned some extra fuel with the rocket engines. If we just use that with the jets, maybe that'll counterbalance the extra mass of the jets. There's many things. There's many variables. But anyway, for now, uh, I need to figure out how to get the air brakes to survive. Uh, that's one thing. That would be helpful. Alright, so that was the test and the result, and I will return with improvements. For now, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.